Welcome to Downtown Sports. My name is Downtown Stephen Brown, and in today's video, guys, I want to talk about Game 2 between the Toronto Maple Leafs and the Tampa Bay Lightning, and I also want to discuss what I think the Maple Leafs need to change, start doing, continue doing, pick up things that they were doing from Game 1 that they didn't do very well in Game 2 to win Game 3 and come back home with a 3-1 series lead, possibly. The final score in this game was 5-3 Tampa Bay. The Lightning did win this game, but if we're looking over the numbers at 5-on-5, five five, both teams were even with two goals apiece. And if we're looking over the rest of the numbers at 5-on-5, five five, the Maple Leafs controlled the majority of the shot attempts, the actual shots, and they concede the scoring chance battle and the high danger shot attempt, as well as the expected goal battle, but it was a relatively close game at 5-on-5 five five, with the Lightning coming out just slightly on top. Where this game really got out of hand for the Maple Leafs was with the penalties. There were seven power plays for the Lightning and four for the Maple Leafs. Some of these penalty calls on the Maple Leafs were kind of soft. And I mean, for a playoff game, I thought I was watching something like middle of November at best. Seven power plays for one team, four for another. Even in game one, the Maple Leafs had six power plays and the Lightning had five. The majority of this series has been spent on the power play. But I'm also not saying for the referees to change the way that they're calling this series. Once they've established a precedent, I would like them to stick to it. So if the MO is going to be to just call everything, well, then it's up to the Maple Leafs and the Lightning to adjust, obviously, right? This quote from Sheldon Keefe talking about watching some of the Lightning games from round one last year against the Florida Panthers and noticing that they created a lot of scrums after the whistles. Guys, I'm not interested in participating in those extracurricular activities. The Maple Leafs have had no problem keeping up with the physical play when the actual play is going. Uh, the stuff after the whistles, if they want to do it, go ahead and let them do it. Let them take the penalty because that's the way that the refs are calling this series. This quote from Wayne Simmons postgame is just absolute daggers. Took too many penalties. I took two. They scored two. They won by two. And I saw a lot of people bagging on Simmons after the game. And I mean, he said it himself, right? They scored and make it a 2-1 game. They got some momentum on their sides. It's going to their legs. And then you take that roughing penalty after the whistle and the lightning go back on the power play. And David Kampf can't clear the zone. TJ Brody doesn't have a stick. And Nikita Kucherov just roofs it. And it's a 3-1 game. And I felt after that point, um, maybe until about the midway point of the third, the Leafs had a real low point. With Kyle Clifford serving his one-game suspension, they opt to go with a fourth line of Wayne Simmons, Colin Blackwell, and Anse Kasha, and that combination just didn't play well together. But that's not the only line for the Maple Leafs, who I thought was extremely disappointing last night, and we'll get to that in a second. The combination of Alex Kerfoot, John Tavares, and Ilya Mikheyev, while they didn't really concede a whole ton at 5-on-5 five five yesterday, they generated absolutely nothing playing together. Before the series began, Sheldon Keefe said that he considered reuniting John Deveres and William Nylander. And in the video that we did looking over the lineup going into game one, we showed a bunch of numbers as to why that'd be an awful idea. The Maple Leafs finished the year 14-2-2 after they bumped William Nylander from John Deveres' wing. And if you're looking at the combination of Nylander, Kampf, and Engvall, um, they played very well together, um, not getting very many offensive zone opportunities. And like we said, we showed this a couple of videos ago, but William Nylander and John Deveres together this season were on the ice for 34 goals for and 42 goals against. And the Maple Leafs had some goaltending issues this year, but there were also some defensive problems. And that line and those two were at the root of some of those throughout this year. But if you're looking at the other stats, they controlled the majority of the shot attempts, the actual shots, the expected goals, the scoring opportunities, and the high danger shot attempt share by quite a bit of a margin. The first two games of this series for William Nylander have been kind of a wash, but in his pregame interview yesterday, he admitted to having food poisoning before game one. He went for lunch at a sushi place and just had all of the unpleasantries that come with that. And I got to tell you, been there, done that, was completely bedridden for the entire day. I have no idea how he played that night, never mind hockey, but just a playoff game. We showed it in our last video, but about a month ago, Bob McKenzie on TSN 1050 said that there was an alleged argument between management and the core four group of this team, where management basically called them out saying, hey, why can you be Boston, Tampa, Florida, Carolina, but not Buffalo and Montreal? And the core responded by saying, we'll take care of business when we need to take care of business. And that game one sure was taking care of business. And if William Nylander has proved anything over the last two years, it's that he can take care of business when business needs to be taken care of. 
12 points in his last 12 playoff games, including a five-goal performance in seven games against the Montreal Canadiens, playing with Alex Kerfoot and Alex Galchenyuk for the most part. For me, it is time to reunite John Deveres and William Nylander. Now, I'm not too sure who the third member of that line is just yet. You could throw Alex Kerfoot there because that's the guy who's played the most minutes with those two guys over like the last three seasons. But at the same time, Ilya Mikheyev has been awesome so far this year. And if you're looking for someone with some speed to take advantage of the chances that William Nylander creates off the rush, Mikheyev is your guy. But Kerfoot's also a pretty underrated burner. Some sneaky speed on that guy that we saw in game one. Between the first two games of this series, the trio of Engvall, Kampf, and Mikheyev have spent about six minutes or so playing together, and they have dominated in their minutes, playing very few offensive zone opportunities. And throughout the regular season, I'll put the numbers up on the screen in a second here, but they were awesome for the Maple Leafs. Controlling the vast majority of the shot attempts, the actual shots, the expected goals, the scoring opportunities, the high danger shot attempt share, and like we said, doing it with not very many offensive zone opportunities. The best part about that line is watching them go from the defensive zone, pushing the pace all the way up ice and creating offense in the other team's zone. But Sheldon Keefe also had a variation of that line with Kerfoot playing with Kampf and Engvall that produced well for the Maple Leafs at a couple of shifts yesterday. So really, it's just your preference. If you want Kerfoot playing with Tavares and Yelander for familiarity, or if you want to throw Mikheyev there because you think he can give you more off the rush and just be more dynamic because he did have over 20 goals in just like 50 games this season. Uh, it's really up to you. To me, the main thing is getting John Deveres and William Nylander back together because they need more from John Deveres and they need more from their forwards at five on five. In terms of the fourth line, let me just talk it out with you guys and you can let me know what you guys think in the comments section. We'll probably do another video tomorrow, so we'll see how it goes. Between... Simmons, Blackwell, and Kasha. Kasha played almost twice as many minutes as those other two guys did. So I don't think Sheldon Keefe is going to healthy scratch him in game three. But we'll come back to Anze Kasha because a lot of people were asking to see Jason Spezza in the lineup for game three. And you know what? Looking over the numbers from that Montreal series, he had three goals and two assists in seven games, five points. I mean, for me, I just squeeze every last ounce that Jason Spezza has out of him. The last two playoffs that he's played in, he's done everything you could have asked from him and more, including fighting in the series against the Columbus Blue Jackets. Um, he's in my game three lineup. In regards to Wayne Simmons and Kyle Clifford, the way that I look at it is, is that Corey Perry has a buddy, and that buddy is Pat Maroon, and they go around gooning it up together because they know that the other one is there. And they're both good players. I'm not going to disrespect them. Corey Perry scored last game. Had 19 goals on the year and over 40 points. Pat Maroon's a three-time Stanley Cup champion. And for me, if you're going to dress one of Wayne Simmons or Kyle Clifford, you got to dress the other. Otherwise, they're going to be a little bit lonely. And the reason why I'm okay with having both those guys in the lineup is because Kyle Clifford has won a Stanley Cup. Wayne Simmons has played over 1,000 games. I think if you go to them as veteran players and just say, hey, can you dial it back from an 11 to a 9.5 or a 10? I think that they're capable of that uh, to just kind of minimize the stuff after the whistles because the reason why I'm okay with having those guys in the lineup is because I don't think no matter who you put on that fourth line, I don't think the fourth line is going to play very much anyway. I think that they're going to end up playing Michael Bunting, Austin Matthews, and Mitch Marner a lot more. I think they're going to shorten the bench and just roll the best guys that you got because in game one, the Maple Leafs showed that they are the faster team. And you know how I know that the Maple Leafs were the faster team in Game 1? Because the Lightning admitted it in Game 2 when they started rolling with a 1-3-1 neutral zone trap in that second period. The Lightning were looking at that first period and they were like, guys, they're out skating us again. So they had to change up their game plan. And they went to this 1-3-1 neutral zone trap to try to slow down the Toronto Maple Leafs. And that's when I felt like the Leafs went through a bit of a lull in the game, was in that second period. But they came back and adjusted for the third when they weren't playing on the penalty kill constantly, and they finished that game strong. I've been saying it in the videos, but here's the numbers to back it up. The Maple Leafs are the number one team in the NHL this season at creating scoring opportunities off of dumping the puck in and winning it back. But you know what? Against that 1-3-1 neutral zone trap, the Maple Leafs don't need to dump it in if they're going to be that much of a faster team. They can beat the Tampa Bay Lightning. They can beat that structure. But if they can't, they're going to need to continue grinding the way that they did all season long, like they did in the second half of that third period. In the Amazon All or Nothing series, Sheldon Keefe said that he wanted to generate more second and third opportunities off of their initial looks. 
And he also said that he wanted to play better against good defensive teams in the playoffs when there's less time and space. Well, the last couple of years, the Maple Leafs have gotten absolutely dogged against teams who played a defensive first style. This season, throughout the regular season, that was not the case. They were a different team in terms of their offense. They need to show up and they need to bring that game one effort. They need to bring the same effort that they did April the 4th against the Lightning when they beat them 6-2. to two. And I think that they can do it. And you know why I think that they can do it? Because their best players are their best players in this series. And they have showed up to play. Mitch Marner, Austin Matthews, Michael Bunting scoring his first playoff goal in yesterday's game. But that effort came off of Austin Matthews being the first player in on the four check. Throwing a hit as he was falling. Getting the puck over to Mitch Marner, who set up that goal for Michael Bunting. Incredible effort that they're going to need more of, but they need to get those other lines rolling as well. Jake Muzzin with a goal and two points so far through two games. Him and TJ Brody playing together. Obviously, it's just two games, but in those two games, they've absolutely kicked ass in terms of the shot attempts, the actual shots, the expected goals, the scoring opportunities, breaking even in terms of those, but controlling the quality of them, playing a more defensive role. We're seeing Jake Muzzin lay everything out there on the ice. He's thrown some real big, massive hits, and he's been on the receiving end of a couple as well, which is kind of scary, but he's gotten back up, and he is giving it everything he has in this playoff series. I saw some people saying that because the Lightning switched to playing a neutral zone trap in that game, that that really limits how effective Ilya Labushkin can be, and that maybe Justin Hall draws back in so that they can move the puck a little bit more effectively offensively, but... Mm, no, no, I'm watching those plays in front of the net yesterday that they highlighted on the broadcast, and um, no, I don't want to switch anything up when it comes to the blue line. If the Maple Leafs want to create a little bit more offense from their D on the fly, I think they can do that by just playing Morgan Riley and Timothy Lilligren together for just a couple of shifts. There's nothing wrong with making some in-game adjustments with what you have, and what the Maple Leafs have is guys that are interchangeable between their pairings. If we're looking at where the shots and the shot attempts came from in this game at 5 on 5 on EvolvingHockey.com, I think that the Leafs can feel confident heading into Game 3. I don't want to say that Jack Campbell played well in a game where he gave up 5 goals, but the score at 5 on 5 was 2 goals apiece. If the Maple Leafs can cut out the stupid penalties and limit the opportunities that they give the Lightning on the power play, I think that we're going to have a lot more to cheer about for Game 3. For as much as Andre Vasilevsky was built up to just be this unbeatable force in games after suffering a loss, I mean, he played well in the first period, and he made that really nice save on Timothy Lilligren, but I didn't feel that he was unbeatable. I mean, they got three past him, and they didn't play a full 60 minutes either. If they can reestablish the speed that they had in game one, if they can get on their horse and win those puck battles on the dump-ins and beat the Lightning forecheck, I think we're going to like what we see in game three. I think that this series is going to go down to the wire. And I know for a lot of people, a seventh game, it sounds scary. I mean, it's scary to me, but I said that if Campbell and the Leafs played well after game one, that I'd be on this hype train 100%. And I am. I think that they can win this series. I think that enough questions after two games have been answered that I can feel confident in that. Again, I don't want to say that Campbell played well because he allowed five goals, but I don't want to say that he played bad either. I thought that the areas that the Leafs lacked in game two are easily identifiable. And if they're easy to identify, you should be able to fix them. That's the good thing anyway. And Matthews and Marner having five points through two games in this series, that they can get the rest of the lineup engaged like they were in game one. You know, William Nylander coming back from food poisoning. Um, I like their chances. But I also want to hear from you guys. What do you guys think in the comment section? Let me know. Don't just... You know, say, oh, well, the Leafs are too small. They're too small. Don't give me actual constructive feedback of this team. Because, yeah, they have been out hit through two games, but I don't feel like they've been physically dominated. I think they've answered that bell when they need to. And they need to be a little bit smarter of it, obviously, because of the penalties. But at the same time, um, I don't feel like they've been physically outmatched. Let me know in the comment section. Like, honestly, honestly, I know people you're wary you're wary to put your faith in the Leafs and I I don't blame you you know no one ever doubts the potential that this team has it's always only the consistency and we're gonna have to see um we're gonna have to see um all, all, all I'm saying is I'm feeling better about this series than what I did coming into it and I think a lot of other people are too I don't know like I said let me know what your comments are down below and make sure to like the video if you did like it and subscribe for more because more is always on the way and guys 
I'll see you in the next one.